Hello everyone and welcome to part 17 of our F122 driver career mode here for Williams in the USA at Coda for the USA Grand Prix. Last time out in Singapore we unfortunately weren't able to score any points after just sort of getting caught out with the wrong strategy and uh, yeah just pitting at the wrong time for the wrong tyres. In terms of the championship we sit P9 just a couple points ahead of Fernando Alonso in the Alpine. I doubt we'll be able to get the amount of points we need in the last three rounds to uh, close in on Esteban Ocon. Last four rounds it is, actually, to uh, get to Esteban Ocon. There's just a bit too big of a points gap. P6 in terms of the constructors for Williams. So not doing uh, the too poorly, to be honest, this season. In terms of the uh, actual pecking order, we have made some big gains heading into this one. We are now very firmly mid-pack and actually closing in on McLaren and Alpine. And actually, they, those guys have closed right in on Mercedes as well. Uh, as Red Bull overtake Ferrari to be the quickest car in the field heading into the USA here. So, yeah, a, a bit of chopping and changing heading into this one and a, a lot of things happening. So, hopefully heading into this round, we can get a bit of redemption for last time out in Singapore and get ourselves some good points with this improved package that we have. This is a good track for myself, I feel. So, hopefully we can show that in terms of raw pace as well as racecraft ability. It is going to be dry from all uh, from the start of the race to the end of the race, as you can see here, clear, and it is relatively warm as well. So, yeah, let's get to the grid rundown now for the USA Grand Prix. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and starting next to them is George Russell. Considering the rest of the grid, we have... Fernando Alonso, Perez, Lando Norris, and Hamilton. Ricardo, Benjamin, Ocon, and Max Verstappen. Albon, Gasly, Mick Schumacher, and Joe. Stroll, Sainz, Yuki Tsunoda, and Sebastian Vettel. Latifi, and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. So here we are lining up in P8 on the grid for the USA Grand Prix. We were handed a couple of positions due to some penalties from other front runner cars, but uh, a great start for the race nevertheless. And we can hope to try and carry that forwards and gain some good points here in this Grand Prix. Also a good qualifying from Albon. He sits in P11, so just one little thing that can happen, or if he can just get a good start and he could find himself getting him uh, some more points in that second car for the team as well as we try now lining up on the grid try and get ourselves a good position a very interesting to turn one a lot of chaos can happen at this track heading into turn one with a big uphill blind apex corner it's very wide as well so you can sometimes get four or five cars wide depending on the starts of everyone around us and it'll certainly be interesting to see how it plays out here in our second season first time in this career mode i believe that we are in this uh, at this track and so let's see if we can make it a good start out in this career as we are underway now for the USA Grand Prix. It's an awesome start for Ricardo. We get a good launch as well, get it closing in on Lewis Hamilton. So we'll look to the inside. I decided to back out of it though. I don't want to go for the move and make it three wide there with Hamilton and Ricardo because I don't want to risk any sort of damage as we look up ahead. Fernando Alonso started in P3. So this is a great start for him to hold that position. He's actually challenging Charles Leclerc for second place as they go side by side into the S's and he gets it ahead of the Ferrari. So a really, really good start. They're showing his experience, the two-time world champion, getting himself up into the second place on the podium, now chasing George Russell, who leads the way uh, in that Mercedes. Alonso, really, really good start. He's been very good for this uh, second half of the season, um, as Ocon won last time out in Monza, and now he'll be looking to try and beat out his team, or at least show that he can do the same as we get dived by Verstappen, who also dives on Daniel Ricciardo, going for the double overtake there in the hairpin halfway through that one. It looks like he's going to get it done as well. They're going to go side by side down the back straight here, down towards the third sector. Ricardo with a bit more straight line speed, I guess getting a bit of slipstream off Lewis Hamilton up ahead as well. See, I'm looking around if, to see if there's maybe some way I can benefit, but I don't really want to risk getting any damage in this early stages. And Verstappen gets the move done there on Ricardo. We tuck back in behind him, P9 for now. So we've lost one position as uh, Verstappen's made his way through there. And as we now head to the end of lap one, onto lap two, we are right behind our fellow as we get the better launch off the corner. We'll use the slipstream, deploying ERS to up towards turn one. We'll go to the outside here, which will give us the better run through the corner. We'll be able to carry more mid-corner speed there. You can see leaving plenty of space. And we do get the run.
run off the corner there into P8. And now we've got to try and chase down that one and a half second gap to Verstappen up ahead while he tries to work his way through traffic. And hopefully we can maybe make our way through with him looking on to the end of lap number four though. Esteban Ocon under pressure from Pierre Gasly. Ocon's really fallen off after that win in Monza in Singapore. He wasn't able to score points last time out. And uh, now this time here he is fighting to stay in the points with Pierre Gasly. He runs wide though under the pressure of potentially losing that spot. And he's going to lose one spot, almost loses the second spot to our teammate Albon who has also lost uh, one position since, this is, uh, since the start of the race just like we did uh, before we moved ourselves back into P8. But Ocon now down to P11 has clearly lost his form since that win in Monza which is such a shame to see as we now look forward onto lap 5 here being re-overtaken by Daniel Ricciardo gets the move done there with the DRS. I tuck back in behind in the slipstream. He goes defensive, so we'll look to the outside. Go for the cut back through the corner, but he very cleverly stops it on the apex so he can't get it done. And we have to sit back behind our fellow Aussie until the end of lap 5 here, where he has a bit of a poor run off the uh, last corner there. And so by the time we have DRS, we're already looking to get alongside Ricardo, and we do fly past the McLaren there into turn 1. He actually tucks back into the racing line as well. That's how quickly we were able to get through. And so that's back into P8 now, but it's now 6.8 seconds to Verstappen ahead of us, so it looks like we've uh, lost touch to those front guys already, as Gasly now does a repeat of what Ocon did, running wide at turn one, so Ocon tries to get his nose back in there, he'll go around the outside of turn two, they're going to go side by side into the Estes section, who's going to be braver here, it's Ocon gets his nose back ahead into the points, that last points paying position into the race, and uh, as you can see now here on lap nine, we're just in a bit of a no man's land, it's now almost ten seconds of a Verstappen ahead, and it's three seconds to Ricardo behind, so at this stage of the Grand Prix, very, very quiet. Not much happening for myself as we now cut to uh, the end of lap 13. Joel Russell continues on, but Fernando Alonso will come into the pit lane, followed by Charles Leclerc. Sergio Perez continues on. So too does Lando Norris. Hamilton will come into the pit lane. Same with Verstappen and uh, ourselves as well, as you can see here. Uh, everyone coming into the pit lane. The other half of the grid, you would assume, coming in at the end of next lap, and we'll see how this sort of plays with the field. Uh, will the undercut or the overcut be the better of the two strategies? That's what we're going to find out here. It should just be a simple one-stop unless you get damage, of course. So not really much to play in terms of tyre choice. It's going to be a very, very simple medium to hard switch, as you can see there, getting nice and done uh, very quickly, not getting held up in the pit lane, which is very good for us as we now head towards the pit exit. We're going to exit the pit lane in what is P14, but obviously uh, about half of the field hasn't come into the pit lane yet. And so at the end of the next lap, we will see whereabouts we sit in the pecking order. As you can see here now on lap 15, we've got Verstappen in P7 all over the back of Lewis Hamilton on these fresh tyres. It looks like the Red Bull able to sort of get them a bit more up to temp as he now finally gets a move done on Lewis Hamilton. He's been sitting stuck behind him uh, for so long, but just hasn't been able to get it done. And so as I just said, the Red Bull looking to have potentially got those tyres up to temperature a little bit quicker and getting on the offensive, although Hamilton doing a very good job at defending. He's going to go around the outside now of Hamilton as Hamilton tried to come back at him, but uh, Max will have the inside of the triple left-hander here and does get the move done there in the end. Meanwhile, up ahead, though, Sergio Perez running wide through the uh, triple right-hander there and uh, loses position to Lando Norris, who gets himself into P4. Leclerc in P3 has to come in back into the pit lane. You can see he's missing his front left end plate there, so the Ferrari has clearly made contact with either Perez or Norris at some point there on the lap and has now come into the pit lane. We'll gain a free position from this, and that is such a shame there for Ferrari. They just can't seem to have things go right for them as we now look at an order check here on lap 16. It's George Russell leading the way for Mercedes by about 1.2 seconds over Alonso in P2, and a very clear P2 as well. Five and a half seconds to Lando Norris in P3, uh, Perez in P4, but Fernando and uh, Norris doing very, very well for themselves in mid-pack cars to be showing that the mid-pack is very, very much closing up to the front of the field. Verstappen sits in P5, Hamilton in P6, and then it's a 10-second gap back to myself in P7 here as we head into the second sector, about seven seconds ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. So still in that massive no-man's land that is just expanding, uh, especially behind us. We've sort of gone a bit equal now with Lewis Hamilton and Verstappen on pace, but the gap behind us is opening to Ricciardo, and then Gasly sits in P9, having gained a spot from Charles Leclerc. Same too with Esteban Ocon also uh, gaining a spot to keep himself in P10 now that Leclerc finds himself down in P13. Uh, Albon 
Unfortunately, still yet to uh, get himself into the points, and it's looking more and more like that won't happen unless he gets very lucky or, uh, or at least uh, pulls up the pace a little bit more as we look here on lap 16. No, again, uh, Albon has very quickly closed up to Ocon in about half a lap there, so he dives to the inside of the final corner. I wonder if Ocon's got an issue because Albon has very, very easily got that move done into P10, which is what we love to see for our teammate to get himself into the points. Meanwhile, further back here now on lap 17, Charles Leclerc is ahead of Carlos Sainz, but makes a mistake entering the second sector. So Sainz attacking his teammate. This is not where Ferrari should be. They are very close to equal best car in the field. They're very close with Red Bull fighting for that top spot. But here they are battling each other outside of the points, which is not where Matteo Bonotto will want to be seeing those guys at the moment. Now, Ocon in P11 defending from Charles Leclerc, but Leclerc going for a move in a very unorthodox space there, as uh, Sainz also gets the move there, uh, done there, following his teammate through. Sainz also diving it to the inside of Charles Leclerc into the final corner. So the two Ferraris still doing battle with each other outside of the point. So these guys are just hurting each other more and more. As the season goes on, they seem to be caring less and less about team orders and helping each other out. At, uh, as, uh, I don't know, they're just sort of letting it slip away from them. We would have thought they were battling for the constructors, but as uh, Red Bull have pulled a bigger and bigger gap, those guys have just sort of stopped caring about that fight altogether and have only been really trying to prove who's better than the other at Ferrari. On lap, yeah, the end of lap 19 here, though, Kevin Magnussen going for a move on Esteban Ocon, and this makes me feel like Ocon definitely has some sort of car issue, maybe power or maybe cornering. I, I can't really tell. There's no big obvious issue, but he's just getting overtaken in places that aren't the usual. Normally, it'll be on a DRS straight around here. But Ocon's just getting dived left, right, and center at every opportunity. Meanwhile, up ahead, Fernando Alonso has closed in on George Russell for the lead of the race. The Alpine is absolutely flying at the moment, and he's looking to get a move done on the Mercedes, our, uh, our senior team here. So as much as I'm loving seeing Fernando do well and overtaking for the lead of the race, as he does here at the end of the straight, uh, it's also a bit of a shame to see the team that we're trying to get to losing out to a mid-pack car as Alonso, the two-time champion, does take the lead of the US Grand Prix. Could we be seeing two race wins from uh, each one of it, uh, one from each Alpine here in this season? That would be very, very exciting to see and a uh, very good showcase of how much this field is closing up as we now look to the next lap. Alonso has pulled well clear of these guys as Lando now going for a move on George Russell. So maybe Russell has some sort of issue because he's now just losing heaps of ground. He's lost Heaps of time to Alonso. Now Norris has caught up to him and passed him here, heading into the third sector. And Perez is also not that far behind as we now cut to lap 23. So just another lap later. And Perez is going to go for a move before they even get to the straight here. Looking to the outside of the hairpin, uh, forces Russell to go defensive. So that will actually give Perez a better run. So maybe that was a bit uh, tactical there from Perez. Maybe he wasn't actually trying to get the move done, but more so try to slow down Russell as he has the DRS and will quite easily get the move done here before even getting to the braking zone. And so Russell, in the space of three laps, has gone from leading down to P4. So that I, I think he absolutely has some sort of engine issue. As we look here on lap 24, there it is. The engine does finally go bang. So it looks like he's been limping around with some sort of issue while Mercedes tried to fix it. But in the end, it just wasn't meant to be. And so Russell is going to retire from the Grand Prix. Not the result Russell would have been looking for here this season. Uh, it, it, it's just not been too great for Mercedes as a whole, really, has it? With Hamilton having a whole bunch of issues. And now Russell also showing that his side of the garage not doing that well either. That is a free extra position for us, though. So that moves us into P6, which is very, very good for us. And that'll be a really good chunk of points as we now cut to lap 26. Daniel Ricciardo under attack from Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Tower. Gasly will go to the inside of turn one. They're going to go side by side with each other. A little bit of wheel banging between them. Ricciardo will have the better run out of the corner. Then the inside of turn two and holds position now ahead of the Alpha Tower. Now heading to lap 27, on to lap 28, to so the final lap of the Grand Prix. We have closed in on Lewis Hamilton. For whatever reason, Hamilton and Verstappen have been really slow. The guys ahead have continued to pull away, but for whatever reason, these guys are just going real slow, and we get the move done there. We get a beautiful crisscross through turn one and get ourselves into P5 now. As we look further back, it is Charles Leclerc sitting in P10, uh, in uh, six and a half seconds back now is Carlos Sainz in P11. So the Ferrari guys are only going to be looking to get one point here as uh, into the final corner now as these guys head on the final lap. Sainz almost handing Magnussen that P11, making a mistake through the final corner. Under attack now from both Haskars. So something has gone seriously, seriously wrong for Ferrari here this season. I guess 
uh, for Charles Leclerc that was more so because he had to make that extra pit stop to fix his front wing. But for Carlos Sainz, he's, uh, it's been really weird because sometimes he has race-winning pace like we saw last time out in Singapore. But this time out, just on absolute plain raw speed, he's just been slow. He's had absolutely nothing as we defend from Lewis Hamilton there as he tries to come back at us and hold on to our P5 for now. And uh, a very, very weird-looking top five, uh, even the top ten, I must say, as we look uh, to Fernando Alonso leading the way into the final corner. He is going to take the win here at Coda for Alpine as he comes across the line very slowly there to celebrate and take in that victory. It's been a while for, for Alon uh, Fernando Alonso, but he does do it. And it's Lando Norris in P2, so what, a, what, what an interesting podium with uh, Fernando winning and Norris in P2. Perez takes the final spot of the podium there for P3, so it's not even the main Red Bull that you would think would win uh, in P3. And then it's ourselves with an incredible P5. Magnificent drive and a great performance from the entire team, securing victory here in Austin. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out of the track was. Speed. It sounds like an awfully reductive statement, but fast cars win races. And we saw that today with our win. As today's winners make their way up the podium steps, the folks at Alpine have shown once again just what it takes to build a successful Formula One team. A well-deserved win for them. So here we are with the results for the United States Grand Prix. Fernando Alonso with an incredible race win makes it two wins for Alpine in the last three races with Ocon winning in Monza and Alonso now at Coda. Lando Norris also doing very well for himself and McLaren to finish in P2 ahead of Sergio Perez in P3. The championship leader Verstappen does a good recovery to go from P10 to P4 there ourselves a really good race getting some points some redemption for the poor performance at Singapore to get ourselves 10 points in P5 and our teammate Albon doing well to finish in P9 and get himself a couple points in the championship as well moving himself into P13 unfortunately Alonso's race win means he absolutely blasts past us in the drivers championship and we drop down to P10 he moves himself to P8 Verstappen as I said the championship leader now six points ahead of Charles Leclerc as Ferrari have just really sort of thrown all the this away from themselves they lead the constructors championship for now ahead of red bull uh, but that gap has been closing and if they keep up performances like this weekend we could very well see red bull taking and leading the championship at the uh, end of the season we're still sitting in p6 for Alp uh, for williams very comfortably ahead of alpha tauri and unfortunately just a bit too far behind uh, alpine to really close that gap in the last three rounds of the season but yeah next round we will be at portugal for the first time in this career so if you guys are looking forward to that make sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more content like this in the future and i'll see you all in the next one goodbye <laughs>